Welcome back to another animation analysis and today I'm going to take a look at the trailer for Connected. And the first thing that immediately stands out to me, which was all very subjective, I love the designs. The character designs are so much fun. And of course, as a child from the 80s, the whole VHS home movie thing is great. But look at this, just the look of this, the design of the car. And I love that they're their outlines, you can see this later, but better in all the shots, but they have interesting outlines. I love that pose with the legs like that. So great. And it's also really interesting that all the characters have, have this massively exaggerated eye pose all the time. But look at that. I just love the look. It's a very interesting render style and the look is, so, at least to me, so appealing. Absolutely love this. But you can see this here again, where there are a lot of extra outlines missing a bit here. So it's very distinct. It's very specific to certain angles and silhouette but again just the look of it the style the render such a fan super cute too as a parent i love all this all the shots super relatable at least to me but it's always something interesting that if you do have a shot and you have one or multiple characters and you put them in a set or with props or or whatever they have is there anything in the shot that you could use where the audience goes oh i know what this is i know how this feels maybe not this <laughs> but when you sit in the car have you done this or maybe the, the the kid is older maybe you're sitting here and your younger son or daughter they're learning how to drive and maybe you did this and so you can immediately connect with the content of the shot or stuff like this i mean, absolutely can connect to that it's so cute on the love with faster moving shots just looking at the posing changes i love this i love how there's the grab onto the jeans the stretchiness but a little bit of relaxation at the very end but also super cute because of the scale being so tiny and <laughs> his look there so cute this too just in terms of detail i don't know if you are in control of this you know if you have a rig and the rig has hair control just to add that little bit of extra movement just for details and not that you have to have that i don't think this is a make or break thing of you know oh, i got hired because i animated the hair but to me like i like doing this i like animating extra bits and pieces uh, in, a, in a shop be it you know whatever whatever props you have be it with windy things and stuff moving and, and maybe there is no sim department there's no time or budget like whatever capacity or previous i just love doing extra work just like cameras like i love animating cameras but speaking of animating i love this here and this is something that i frequently uh, talk to my students about is I am a big fan of not just putting characters in a set because that will inform, you know, and then inspire different acting choices, but the surface texture and the surface variety and just the material of the surface. So socks on something like this, that is going to be slippery. And it's interesting to animate. It's interesting to see the effect of this. And imagine you have something like that where actually now there's carpet. That's actually the example that I always bring up in class, where imagine you're animating someone sliding and then they get to this point, what will happen to the foot? It's going to suddenly stop, your whole body is going to get, get thrown forward, and then you have to be able to hop, and then you can't slide on the carpet unless it's a crazy speed. It's going to be a couple hops to come to a still. And I think this is all really cool to animate. It's totally up to you as you change the properties of the surface and how the character interacts with it. That's a lot of scribbles for doing nothing here. <laughs> and then I love this. I love the change from that to zoom, much sharper, but look at this. I love the character design what can i say it's so cool <laughs> i love that the elongated part here with the leg poses like that and him like this with the shoes and just the silhouette of it so good just like in the soul trailer i love when the world has there's usage it's dirty interesting different type of textures there are different elements it just feels like a lived-in world and even out there you got different designs just of the cars nothing feels like it's a copy paste and then we're back to those crazy eyes and i love it you can see here the kind of the painterly approach where some things are a bit more detailed but the rest feels almost drawn and you got again the outlines on the geometry and not everywhere it's very interesting to watch love to see you uh, making of in the behind the scenes once this movie is out on disc how they achieved all of that it's so cool and then there's of course prop usage and you can see just a little bit of detail you can see how there's an anticipation in the fingers they start moving first before this moves over there. And of course, all the very appealing poses and their difference, there's contrast, right? There's nothing twinning, even though it's somewhat the same, you still have this and that as a silhouette and then the finger poses are different. And of course, asymmetry in the face here and even the silhouette of this guy. 
so good i just love the again the amount of detail that gets into a very mushy painterly aspect but then the models how they are for the background characters everything feels just like in spider verse right just they all have a very distinct style and look like nothing feels copy pasted just so cool awesome movies ah now we can see a good look on those lines again the asymmetry of everything the whole pose you would think well that's fairly it's gonna be fairly mirrored but then you still see how much you can do just by changing things of course you got also the advantage of the outfit being different helping with asymmetry and the hair giving us a, a different uh symmetry look if that's a word or an expression not sure if this is zoiberg or pac-man <laughs> This is something else that I think is really cool that I try to recommend to students, but I understand the complexity and the, the tricky aspect of it. But what I love is that as she's doing all of this, she's delivering her line, whatever line you're gonna have, you hear that is spoken. She has all of this. She sits down, she hops around to change that. He's doing this and she comes in with the plate and she opens the laptop. It's a lot of, interesting. It's a lot of secondary action where people are doing something while they deliver the line versus a character in empty scene. And, and again, there, there are examples of characters in the empty scene and the shots are fantastic. I just think this gives you, again, so many opportunities in terms of body changes, how they sit, the poses, how they're going to grab something. All of that will help you with, with asymmetry and not repeat the poses. I think all that just gives you a springboard and kind of a well of ideas of, ch of changing things and making potentially the, the animation just more interesting and more varied and less default with someone just standing there and then having your W pose and all those exaggerated arm poses that we see in, in so many shots out there. And generally just the design, everything. I love this. I love the hair. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I just, the face is really appealing. And I just love the choice that those eyes are always on maximum wide. <laughs> There's always, ah, even the dog, ah. And it's interesting how we always tell the students not to do any type of twinning. But then in the movies, you have it. Even though there's a little bit of offset, you can see how that is offset there. But every now and then, twinning is okay to make a point where, in this case, he makes a point of saying now. Like, this is an important point to him. So every now and then, you can add this and it just, it gives you an extra emphasis. But of course, as a as a teacher, as a mentor, we always, the first thing go like, no, don't twin, don't do this. But there are always exceptions to the rule. And, you know, it's a, it's a recommendation. So I wouldn't say it's a, it's a hard rule. But this is interesting too for contrast, where you can see <laughs> all of this while they stay like that. Oh, poor guy. And this is cool too, when they have that little argument here and then grabbing things back and forth. What I like is this here is something else that I sometimes recommend to students, but it's tricky depending on context, if there's audio, but it's, it's two characters doing something. Either you, that's all you see are hands arguing, moving back and forth. Now this is moving things back and forth, but it's, it's the main idea of a character in the middle reacting to things that are happening outside. And this could be a verbal argument, which is then tricky because if you don't have the audio on, it might not be as clear. Or in this case, you make it visual. Maybe this could be something where in your shot, this is something lower that someone pushes back and forth. Like, I don't want it, well, I don't want it. And this character maybe really wants it and keeps looking and has that almost this reaction. <laughs> so has this reaction while this is being put back and forth. And maybe at the end, the character picks it up and I, well, I want it. So that's something else that I would recommend in, in trailers or whatever shots you can get a, a hand on just to look at the setup and maybe you can that, you can use that as an idea. Not don't, don't copy it, but it could be a springboard for ideas. And I fix it on this one. Even those shapes are just not super clean round shapes. Love all this. Then we have the mishap. Dun, da, da. I swear I have seen this before in, in real life in a store. <laughs> cool too, just as a mechanics aspect in terms of Step back and a walk, there's good weight. This could be something like an exercise. This is not too long, it could be interesting to do. A character holding something, turning around and walking away. Not too long, but still it's difficult to do. And I think definitely worth a shot, literally. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Also interesting with the framing, cold, warm, and they're being left alone in this. But yeah, just the overall look and design, the lighting, the texturing. Love all that. There are a lot of foreground elements too in those shots. I'm always a big fan of layers and shots as well. This September. This one was cool too when I was looking at it. The finger poses. Even something like this. And this is interesting where I will critique it. 
But then again, this is a good example of whatever I say in my classes, there's always an exception and it's really not that important. So when, if a student would show me this shot, I would say, okay, well, you're moving your arm and it's a fairly fast move. And because of that, there needs to be a little bit of movement in the neck and maybe the slight move in the head because the arm is going to affect the rest of the body. So as this arm moves, that nose might end up being maybe here, maybe less. And in this example, the head is not moving at all until this. But if you watch this in real time, it's totally fine. And it's kind of part of the charm. It's part of the style where even when she moves here, there's a little bit of movement there, but it's not like there's a massive movement in the fingers. So again, in everything, there's always an exception, it always depends on the style. But going back to the fingers, what I thought was cool was on this pose, you got a little bit of mush here, but you got that and you got this kind, then you got totally different pose here then back to a different pose here, and then the flattening with a bit of relaxation, the squishiness of all that. So every frame counts, and it's something that you just kind of read, so it's not this, this same mushy claw that is held throughout all those frames to then pop into one of the pose. And I love that intention to detail where it's really every frame is different. And of course, that I'm a big fan of, just, just pushing the medium and adding different elements so it's, it's not so, oh, so, cute. so it's not so clean and kind of the usual that you see in renders. Especially, I think after that reaction, there's this, there's this big, <laughs> where are we going together? Another example of, again, he makes a point that's important to him and it's a twin pose and there's always an exception to everything. And I think she realizes what he's about to do. <laughs> Love this. This would be almost a Spider-Verse shot with the shoulder. Hey. But then you got the reaction where, ah, I love this too. It's great. Good old doggy. That is always cute. Probably works better in the trailer form where it's always... Cut, 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 cut. But I love that the tongue goes, kind of goes almost behind. Like it latches on to the tooth. Like it's not even licking just the mustache. It's really in there. I love that face too. It's so good. But I love that montage. It's great. Lots of quick cuts and quick elements. And, and that could be, I mean, this could be something potentially for your reel as well. What if you construct a shot where it's a recurring gag, whatever, like something touching something else, whatever you want to do. And it's quick. And then that gives you a lot of options of different mechanics. This is a lot of really cool stuff in terms of hand poses and just general mechanics. And again, the contrast of a lot of movement and almost no movement. And even this here, as you go in where that's his initial pose and you can see how it starts with these shapes, then gets into this horrified and then pose and then it goes in and you can see the, the tongue is in that ear completely there and has that reaction. I think this could be kind of cool. Not that you have to copy it, but in terms of a dog doing something to a human, but it could be interesting to have a lot of repeated elements and also using timing for contrast where you have lots of fast elements, fast elements, hold, fast elements, so this contrast, so it's, it comes in threes and it's not always the same. It has this, this, hold a bit, and then this. So even in the rhythm of, of this little montage, there is a change, there's a change in timing, a change in, in rhythm. <laughs> the dog, I love it. Oh, there's a slight hint of the character who's holding the dog. And we're getting to the reveal of the potential enemy. But I'm looking at this here too. I can see a little bit of finger movement in something like this. You still can keep alive. You still need to change a couple of things. Then we get into that. That's some love the, the graphic aspect of this with the colors. Look at that. It's very cool. Oh, I love this. Love this. Love it. Now, I know this could be very uh, stormtroopery, white and black, and that's probably why I love it. But still, it's not quite Hal, it's Pal. It's good stuff, I love it. And again, different designs. They look totally different. It's not a copy paste, I love this. This is cool though, I'm totally in. I love when a movie completely switches to something else and it's not everybody's cup of tea, like from dusk till dawn, <laughs> you're toast. I love that. So now that this whole movie changes direction, oh, I love this too. That, that's great, love it. And now we're seeing that this is actually a different kind of story and they have interesting faces too. I'm totally on board, I love, this whole trailer is me going, I love it, I love it, I love it. But it is true and that's the reason why why I wanna record this and showcase this and I, you know, this might be for you, might not be for you, but I absolutely love it. And one of the rare cases where even though we tell students don't do toilet humor, I wanted to show this, this is so great. The amount of drag on that head, there's so much force that this goes up first <laughs> and then this, oh, so good. Pal router, more, oh, one of that ones. Look at the details. You got your speakers, toasters, microwaves, and drones. Oh, look at that. 
Get a three point landing. But there's no pause and head up just yet. Curious how that's going to be at the movie. But just the, again, the look of it. And now you got that contrast of that worn world and all the dirt and everything. And then you got nice and clean Star Wars y robots. But even there's a little detail of that. So something happened there. So this just goes on and on and on in terms of count me in, count me in. Of course, this dog is going to be fodder for so many awesome things. Interesting too, let me see. Just checking, but there's always probably something interesting, a little Easter egg in those faces. No, not in this one. And I think this would be an interesting moment too in terms of a shot idea where maybe your body mechanics wouldn't be a walk cycle or anything. It would be people jumping or trying to jump over something and not making it because of their size, because they're too squished together. You got a lot of contact here, interesting changing uh, changes of poses, him struggling with arms and legs in the air. I think that's a, there's a lot of potential of really sh <laughs> showcasing things. Bam, bam, I love it. Ah, oh, so good. And even this, if you're animating a prop, you got a little, bit, a little bit of opening as he pushes, and then bam, look at that, with one frame, just for that impact, and then still have a little bit of bow at the end. Great. This is cool too. This is just one of these. I'm glad that's in the trailer. But you can really go through and look at the visual effects and just the style of it. Oh, it cuts out. But there's more. There's more <laughs> like that. Look at that. So good. And I know it's one of those where I just keep saying, so cool and so good. Ooh, love that car design. This must be a pain too to animate. But even on detail stuff like that, bam, they get hit. You can see how they go up there. They're still not static. There's still a lot of stuff you need to do, even though it's a quick shot. That's cute too. That's all for you, like detail work. <laughs> the pudgy hands. That still needs to get animated. Get back to the old joke. Hold on, where's the tongue? Let's see. Ooh, the tongue comes out and they're connected. No pun intended. But again, just love this idea of something, be it something big on something small, or something small on something big, in a repeated fashion. And then you can show off your variety. Like it's technically always the same thing, but the results and the reactions are different. I think that's cool. That's a cool idea, potentially for a shot. And that's it. Connect it. <laughs> One more. Just the arms showing up there. All right, well, September 18th, count me in, connect it. Yes, I absolutely want to watch this. Thank you, everybody, for making this movie. And thank you for watching this, of course. <laughs> Bye.